Welcome to A New Life in Christ, a radio ministry of Agape Family Worship Center, where Mark McVeigh is pastor. We are located at 4111 Maple View Drive, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. We're also on Facebook. You can friend request us at Agape Family Worship Center, Beaver Creek, Ohio, or follow us on YouTube at Axman for God. That's A-X-E-M-A-N, the number four, God. Join us now for a service already in progress. If you have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And just a, just a, a quick overview. Here is the Apostle Paul is addressing the Corinthian church. Uh, he says, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that our, all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. In other words, a lot of folks may be acting like they're strangers to the word. Come on now, I believe that there's folks that act like they don't know what you're talking about when you begin to talk about the covenants of promise. Because God began to set covenant with promise uh, in the children of Israel. And he says, I want you to understand all of our fathers. Uh, you know, it wasn't just some of them that came through this. He said, brethren, I would not have you ignorant concerning this, that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized uh, unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did eat the same spiritual meat. In other words, they all were fed with manna. They all were fed with the water uh, that God began to spring forth out of that rock that Moses struck the rock. In fact, if you go there, it's not what I'm teaching this morning, but uh, that was the position that Moses stood. Uh, he did not glorify God in the fact that when he smote the rock, uh, he said, look, he, he, do I always have to make provision for you? Who's making provision for you? Moses wasn't doing it. It was God through the hand of Moses in obedience. The moment we get to the point where that it's me, I, my, let me tell you something. God will take you down into a position of understanding who is in control. So that you understand that while we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. Amen. So the apostle Paul here is leading and directing here some things uh, in order to open up a realm of understanding. He says, did they all not drink uh, of the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Uh, it was a, a sign of direction, things that were coming to be. But listen, as the spiritual rock the rock which the builders rejected, the word of God became the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, uh, our foundation. You know, I'm ex so excited because without him, we are nothing. In him, all things are possible to them that believe. And as we begin to open our spirit to the things of God's word, for an example, God will show us the things that are necessary to bring us into that greater realm of understanding to release his word. A lot of folks get so fat and sassy with God's word, they think they got it all, they got it everything they need, and they're going to just sit back and relax. Not so. God says begin to understand this, uh, that when we get our mindset that we are rich and increased with goods uh, and have need of nothings, that we're poor, blind, wretched, and naked. We need the covering of God's word in every direction. And I know that God wants to do some amazing things in this season of our life. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, God is about to do something in this season. It is a new season. God is about to do something in this season of your life. There's literally some things beginning to shake and shift in the earth that is concerning you and your next position that God is moving you to. Amen. That next place, that next level. And a lot of folks say, well, I'm too old, I'm past my season. Oh, no, you're not. Listen, I, I, I think of Lester Summerall who launched a ministry of feeding and ministering to the needs of the poor at 80 years old. You think about that. And I never will forget when he was being interviewed on TBN, some folks said, well, you, aren't you a little bit old to be starting a ministry of this magnitude? Thank you. Aren't you a little bit old to be starting a ministry of this magnitude? And his response was, I'm just now getting to the age that God can trust me. You think about that. But listen, we get it to the point where we think, well, I've got this figured out and I know what I'm going to do. How about getting on your face before God and saying, Lord, what is it that you would have me to do? 
Lord, I don't know anything save Jesus Christ and him crucified. How is it that I can communicate this with others in order to get the word into the lives of individuals? Because you know what we will do as parents? We'll make allowances for our kids. Oh, that's my, ch- that's my child. Knowing that they need correction in order to get back to the place that they're going to be successful. Oh, come on, don't look at me like you've never done that. We have to get back to the point where that we're teaching the difference between living a sinful life and a godly life. Look at what these examples were. Look at what the word of God says here. With many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. And I want you to look at this as our examples. What the word of the Lord says is they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. I believe that God wants us to set a standard in our home. God wants us to set a standard in our personal life as well as our home. You know what? A lot of folks wonder, why, why am I not, why is there no peace in my home? It's because there's no standard in the home. So God wants to begin to direct and order some things in the lives of people that are going to set a standard over their home that will bring peace and sanctuary to their house. You bring the unclean thing in and guess what? You are headed for trouble. You bring this in and you're headed for disaster. You allow this to take place in your children's lives and you're setting them up for failure. What are you saying, Pastor? I want you to look at this. Let's go a little deeper because he deals with some things here that oftentimes are just kind of skirted around. Well, we won't talk about that. There needs to be a a place called the altar in the house, not just in the church. We wonder, well, what's going on? How come these things are happening uh, in my home and in my family? uh, And why is the enemy so easily ravaging? The word of God says, lay aside every sin and weight that so so easily besets you. uh, And begin to set the the facts of God's word alive in your spirit. You have to do that. Look at what it says. These things were our examples, verse six. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters as were some of them as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and they rose up to play. Now, Wednesday night, we talked about some of these things that the enemy ravages the house with. Uh, We begin to say, well, you know, it's all right. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. When you go to the courtrooms, I I had the privilege of sitting in different court areas uh, where children are going through drug court and so on like that. I'm talking about children. I think the youngest that was there was maybe five to six years old, and he was selling drugs on the street for his mother. You've got an 11-year-old that has a cocaine addict uh, habit that is surpassing the mind of the, of the judge, says, how do you get that kind of drug habit at 11 years old? And he says, my dad sells it, and I do the cocaine with my dad. I said, then why isn't there a bench warrant for the father? What, what are we looking at here? Because the scripture says there's a controversy in the land and blood has reached out and touched blood and responsibility is sometimes even further because there's parents that have children that have no business raising children. Amen. Setting no example, but the poorest example alive and think that it's funny. Oh, I grew up in a time where that even in my own family, it was like funny to hear the little one say curse words. Do you know that today, I remember my grandmother trying to set a standard. The problem was that she was the grandmother. I won't call her name, nor his name. But they grew up in in an environment where everything was funny. Listen at that. Listen at that talk. He tell him what's on his mind. You know what? Both are in prison today. Because they were never taught respect for the law. They were never taught respect for adults. I was a taught when I was a little one. I didn't raise my voice to no one. The few times that I maybe sat, spat something back, you know, I, I had a little bit of sass. I caught a hand in the back side of that hand hitting my mouth and knocking me in the floor. In the early 50s, the 
difficult things that were happening in the class was running in the halls. You, you can check this out. Running in the halls, throwing paper wads and chewing gum. Those were the serious things that were happening in classrooms and schools. Now it's rape, drug abuse, and murder. You think about that. We have examples. Look at what the word of the Lord says. I can get back to this in verse six. Now these were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things uh, as they also lusted. Neither be you idolaters uh, as were some of them as written as the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. You think about that because of fornication they were killed under the law, I understand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur you as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. You know, I have never seen a time where that there's more murmuring, complaining, griping. You can't turn on the television if somebody's not complaining and griping and murmuring and everybody's just all tore up about it and nervous about it and what are we gonna do? And I can tell you where it is is we have failed in our moral stability to stand up and take direction and be accepted to, to our own actions. This is what the scripture says. Now all these things happen unto them for an example and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. In other words, all of these things that have been opened up and written down are for our example in order for us to learn and grow, for us to understand that there is a liability unto God. He has given us life. He has given us hope. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. But if we reject that knowledge, he said, you'll be no priest to me. I will reject you and I will also reject your children. Somebody said, well, uh, that, that's in the book of Hosea chapter four, but the word of God says it like this. Uh, the reason being is because we have forsaken the truth. Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Because a lot of folks today feeling like, well, I've got it all together. I understand. I am my own man. I am not my own man. I belong to Jesus Christ. I am my father's son. And you know what? I have been bought with a price. And those things that I have purposed in my heart are the purpose that God has set before me. I am not my own. I am not going my own direction. I am not working my own plan. I have committed my walk before God to see the glory of the Lord. There has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able to. But with that temptation will make also a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. You know, there's some things that we need to understand about idolatry, and it's not just about bowing down to an image. It's not just bowing down to a statue. Uh, it's mindsets and traditions uh, that take you away from the word of God. That is what idolatry is all about. It is so important for us to understand that, uh, that we make gods uh, out of other things. We make gods out of ourself, our own self-image. Look at what the word of the Lord says. In James chapter one, James, a servant of God and of Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. I don't know about you, but it's not exciting for me to come under temptation. I don't like temptation, but you know what? All that have ceased from sin are going to come under condemnation, temptation, aggravation, you think about the, the things that you come under because of having serving the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You can get your own mindset going and say, well, you know what? I am going to do it my way. God will step back and let you do it your way. How's that working for you? No, I don't want to do it my way no more. I want to do it God's way. But now you've created a whole lot of mess over here. What are you going to do with that? Just walk away from it? No, we have a responsibility with the word of God. Amen? Hey, you know, I mean those people that like to make a big mess and just walk away. Yeah. I watched a guy the other day pulling through the drive-thru at McDonald's. 
He opens the car door and his girl sets up Wendy's bags and, and cups, just set it right out on the parking lot and kept driving. I'm thinking, you know what? If, if, if my mother would have saw me do that, she'd have jerked me up by the hair of the head and said, you get out there and pick that up right now. My brother encountered all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Those temptations sometimes will be bursts of anger. Now, what do you think is going to happen if you go over there and peck on that window and say, uh, could you pick that up? That was really rude of you to just to set that out on the street for somebody else to pick up. Probably not going to be greeted well, are you? Listen, there's, there is wisdom that is coming from the word of God in order to give you the strategy to break this cycle. Amen. How many want to break the cycle? I don't know about you. You can do it in love. You can do it in a way that's going to be teaching and training. You know what? I, I, I've been working on my grandson. Pick up after yourself. Don't leave it for your mother to pick up after you or your grandmother or me. Pick up after yourself. And a couple of them's getting it. Carrington, not so much. But the, the younger ones, are they, they make it fun to pick up and put things away. Know this, that the trying of your faith works patience. God wants you to have patience as you're, 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 you're being tested and temptation comes. Brethren, count it joy when you fall into divers' temptations. I know that it's not joyful. It's not a happy thing. But guess what? When you get past that anger of being frustrated, that's when the joy comes, when you can flow through the anointing of God and break that thing off. Let no man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord if he's a double-minded man. You got to be steadfast about this. Look at what the scripture says. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not man, let that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. I'm going to tell you something about being double-minded. I'm around people that are on again, off again with God all the time, double-minded. I believe and then I don't believe. I'm walking in the counsel of God's word, but I'm not going to walk in the counsel of God's word. I've got an opinion about everything. That person is double-minded and unstable in everything. There's no steadfastness in them. You have got to get a hold of the scriptures. You have got to build the word of God into your life and lifestyle so that you will not stumble when the enemy comes to test you and put you at a place of temptation. Because guess what? It's coming. Do you know how I know that? Because I know where temptation comes. Temptation comes from the flesh and the lust of the flesh. So guess what? We're going to deal with that till Jesus comes. You're going to have to put that under the subjection of God's word and begin to allow his presence to direct and order your steps. Look further what the word says. Let the brother of low degree rejoice and that he is exalted, but the rich and that he is made low because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass and flower thereof faileth. And the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. You're going to come up against some things. There's going to be times where that you're going to be tempted. I just ain't going to do what I know I'm supposed to do. I know folks that have made promise to God and then went back on that promise to God. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Now, a lot of folks think that lust can only be derived around physical, sexual matters, but that's not what the Word of God says. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the three categories that sin generally falls under. And a lot of times, lusting to have, lusting to get, lusting to 
to, to be covetous of somebody else's possessions. Uh, those things cause you to stumble. The word of God says the man that desires and pursues riches uh, pierces himself through with many hurtful and lustful perversions. Now I think a lot about this. Uh, a lot of times it's not necessarily another man or another woman that that lust is conceived in, but it's conceived in a desire to have something that you don't have at the moment. And then when you get it, you got to go to something else and then to something else and then to something else. We wonder why is it that the world is in the shape it's in today? Because we place importance on things that are really not so important. And we grab hold of things that literally you can't hold on to forever. And we think that we can. I say this all the time. He is no fool that will sacrifice the things he cannot keep that he may gain the things he cannot lose. What does that mean exactly? That means as you give of yourself. A lot of folks that know me know that I'm a, I'm a giver. I like to give things away. I remember when I was little, I would get a new toy and I'd give it away. Clothes, shoes, didn't matter. And my mom used to get on to me. I remember one time we were down in front of St. Vincent's Hotel and we were feeding the homeless and we had hot soup and coffee and sandwiches and chips and little Debbie cakes and we were feeding people and it was cold. And a fellow came up there, he had no shoes on, no coat, and he was freezing. I mean, he was shaking from the cold now, not shaking from being dope sick. He was shaking so, and I, my mom had bought me a new coat I gave it to put it put it on him. I had a, a pair of newer boots on. I said, "Put these on. I can get in the car and go home and put on another. I've got shoes. I got a, shoes are my thing. I got plenty of shoes." I have found out this is the truth, amen? When you begin to give, God begins to reciprocate in like kind. We've given vans away and God's blessed us with a van. We've given cars away, God's blessed us with a vehicle. You know, I feel like that God will continually pour into you as you begin to more, pattern your life after the things and the blessings of God and as you give, guess what? Those abundance to give continues to pour in. Because you can't outgive God. I saw my brother in law put that on Facebook. You can't outgive God. And I'm not talking about your tithe. You give out of your excess. Tithing is giving out of the abundance that God has blessed you with. It's, the tenth is a tithe. A lot of folks miss that. But when you begin to be a giver, it's easy to give other people stuff too. It is. If it's not yours, it's easy to give it away. I'm reminded, <laughs> I'm reminded how that David got it in his spirit. He was a, it was a time of sacrifice. And he was away from his home. And there was a king there that took a liking to him. And he says, look, I, I'll give you my threshing floor. And I will give you the things you need in order to sacrifice to God. And he says, no, you won't. And he says, well, why not? I, I want to bless you. And he says, first of all, I am not going to give to God what cost me nothing. You think about that. Are you willing to give God what didn't cost you anything? But if it cost you something, I'm going to, oh, that's mine. That's idolatry. If you didn't know, that's idolatry. So God wants us to get to that place that we're not just because we got to, but because we get to give and bless and minister to him. And a lot of times you may not understand it. Go with me over here to the, to the uh, gospel of, of Mark. I want you to see this. And I'm going to close. I, I feel like that I have rambled this morning, just started out that way because of a, uh, of a scratchy throat. But I, I want to show you this. And, and it's not Mark. It's, it's in Matthew Go to Matthew 25. I want you to see this because it's so important that we understand that as if the trial of our faith is not enough, then comes temptations. And it's easy to close the door and not look outside in this day and time. A lot of folks, I know folks that they get weary over the things that are happening in the earth. Don't get weary. Get excited because you have an opportunity to make a difference like never before. You do. 
You have an opportunity to touch someone's life for Christ like you've never had before. We are in a time of times right now where that we are able to do great things. God says in the last days, uh, they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. Uh, what kind of exploits uh, are you looking to do? What kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, just outpourings of God's blessing are you wanting to release uh, in the lives of those around you? Guess what? You can do whatever you desire to do. God will make his approval on that as you begin to bless and not curse. When this, verse 31 of Matthew 25. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate the one from the other as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Now, I believe that there are sheep nations and there are goat nations. Well, what's the difference, Pastor? Goat nations are those that are rebels fighting against the word of God, antagonistic, terroristic in view, and literally are headed for destruction according to the word of God. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come you blessed of the father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw you we hungry? When, when did we ever see you hungry and fed you? And the thirsty and he gave you drink. Saw you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when saw we you sick or in prison and came unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So listen, old Grandpa Jones used to do that song at Christmas time. Does anybody remember the Christmas guest? Each time someone came to the door as he was praying, God, I'm alone. I just real be nice if you'd come and sit with me for a spell. And each time that somebody came in, he fed them. He gave them something warm to drink, maybe placed a coat over their shoulders, ministered to their tired, worn out feet. And as they went on, he would go back to praying, Lord, I don't understand why you wouldn't come and sit with me. And he said, in his final prayer, as he's going to bed, the Lord said, I've came and visited you three times. I was the beggar. I was the man with the sore, tired, cold feet. I was that one that had no place to get warm by a fire. And see, a lot of times we miss that because the word of the Lord says, when you've done it unto the least of these. See, the temptation is to stand back and say, well, you know what? I can't get involved. I don't want to get involved. I got too much going on in my own life. But I have found in my walk with God, if we will be like the the disciples that heard the voice of the Lord when he says, we must needs go to Samaria. Yeah, it may take you a little bit of extra time. It may take you off of your schedule, but I have found when we allow God to take us off of our schedule, we're on his. We may get a little aggravated because we got to stay just a little bit more. We need to do a little bit more. We need to go the extra mile. And then God begins to show up and then we get excited. Uh, how could I have missed it? Uh, I don't understand because our ways are not his ways. And the king shall answer, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. We're so glad you tuned in today to Agape Family Worship Center's A New Life in Christ. If you'd like to send contributions or donations for the radio ministry, you may do so by sending it Agape Family Worship Center, 4111 Maple View Drive, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. It is our hope that the message has truly blessed you today. 